Hello, I'm Scott Osterweil. I'm the creative director of the MIT Education Arcade and the MIT Game Lab, and a research director here at the MIT Comparative Media Studies program. And what I'd like to talk about today is learning from play and the ways in which we use games uh, to help foster playful exploration. Play, uh, by way of definition, is really the thing that we all do when we're not otherwise taking care of our survival, when we're not uh, looking for shelter or taking care of our young or seeking food. When we really have our own time, we tend to play, whether that's reading a book or going to a movie or playing a musical instrument or listening to a story or listening to music or playing games. Those are all forms of play. Play is engaged in not only by children but by adults. Uh, on Halloween, adults dressing up for Halloween, that's a form of play. People going to Mardi Gras or playing golf or playing tennis, those are all forms of play. And of course, play isn't just humans. Most animals play. Uh, it's tempting to think of play as just a way in which we learn uh, certain necessary survival skills. But in fact, uh, even when survival is not at stake, we, uh, we play in new ways to explore the world. What we're interested in doing here is using games as a way of organizing play. Children will, will play on their own without any intervention, but if you give somebody an interesting game, a game that provides them with interesting, meaningful challenges, they will tend to rise to those challenges. What games do that's different from just free play is give us a structure and give us a set of uh, proximal goals that uh, we, we have a sense when we take on a new game, even if we're not very good at it, we have a sense that maybe we'll get a little better. And the game gives us just enough feedback to say that we are getting better, whether it's in the form of a score or in golf where the ball lands. Those things are the feedback that we get that tells us we're getting better and we tend to rise to the challenge. We may not like every game, but we all tend to find games where that challenge interests us and where we continually work to improve. If we give children games that have interesting intellectual challenges, that challenge them to solve problems in new ways, to look at the world in different ways, they'll rise to that challenge. We have lots of experience of kids who uh, might normally present in the classroom as bored or uninterested or not motivated, and when faced with a game, they will suddenly show tremendous initiative, tremendous invention, tr tremendous creativity. Teachers often tell me that in the games that we develop, they see performance from kids they never expected to see it from. So because games give a kind of authentic challenge. Uh, if you think about yourself playing a game, you can probably remember some game, some sport, some hobby, uh, some form of play where you actually took on something difficult and challenging and were really satisfied when you made it to the end. It may have been really hard. A good game is often hard. In fact, our colleague at MIT, Seymour Papert, coined the term hard fun to talk about the fact that in some ways the challenges we like best, the challenges we find most engaging, most enjoyable, are the hard ones, the ones that, that put goals in front of us that we don't always hit right away. Uh, one of the normal experiences of play is failure. Children are used to failing at play, whether it's losing a game or having the tower of blocks they build fall down. That kind of failure is a normal part of childhood activity and children are incredibly resilient in the face of that kind of failure. So our goal is really to help uh, educators think about making school more like play where the, the cycle of experimentation, failure, discovery, mastery is all just a natural part of the experience for every child.